morning. It's a joy to be able to share with you this morning. And as you can see from my backdrop, yes, this is December. Now, you really probably can't tell, unless you can zoom in on the picture, all of the little ornaments on this tree come from India. They're paper mache or little cloth things. I call this my India tree, and it just brings me joy to think of you all. I can't be there with you this month, but uh, you're on my heart and in my prayers. But I want to begin our devotions this morning back in the book of Genesis. And I want to read, first of all, as we begin, a verse from Genesis chapter 35 and verse 7. And this is what it says. It's talking about Jacob. He built there an altar, and he called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him. Just wanted to talk for a few minutes about the story of Jacob. This is not Jacob's first trip to Bethel. This is his second trip. We remember the story that he made his first encounter with God at Bethel. Remember, if you go back to the uh, chapter 28 of Genesis, you find the story there. And it tells how uh, he had to run for his life because he had cheated his brother Esau. He had stolen his birthright and his blessing, and now es Esau threatened to kill him. So he's fleeing for his life into the wilderness toward his uncle's place. And he arrives at this spot late in the night. He's tired, he's frightened. He lays down to sleep. It says he uses a rock for his pillow. It's there in that 28th chapter. And then he has this marvelous dream where he sees a stairway or a ladder that reaches from earth all the way up to heaven. And at the top of it is God. And the Lord speaks to him. He says these beautiful words in verse 15. He says to Jacob, I am with you. And when Jacob woke up, he was just so overwhelmed uh, knowing that he had been face to face with God, that he took that rock and he poured oil on it. He made it an altar and he named the place Bethel, which means house of God. El is the a first name of God that we see in the Bible, Elohim, which means creator God. He met face to face with creator God at that place. But we know how the story goes on. He reached his uncle's place. He worked uh, so many years. He was there 20 years, actually more, I think, altogether. He worked to earn his wives there. And then uh, eventually his family grew so big and his, his flocks and his herds, everything was so big that he needed to separate from his uncle's place. So he set back. God told him, go back, go back to Bethel. So he heads back with his family, a very different man now, not just a frightened young man running for his life. Here he comes back, a wealthy man with wives and children and flocks and herds. And uh, he has uh, just a very different scenario. But something has changed on the inside too. Because you see, we have the experience there where Jacob wrestled with God. He realized that the things of this earth are not the things that were important. And when he gets back to Bethel, he renames it. And that's what the verse that I read to you. It's not just Bethel, house of God, but he named it El Bethel, which literally means the God of the house of God. This is the significance. Jacob had shifted his emphasis from the place to the God that he met there. God himself took the center place in Jacob's heart and in his interest. Because it was there, we read it, that God revealed himself to him. The important thing wasn't the place. It was that uh, presence, meeting God, the presence of God that was there. And, you know, it's not a surprise that God is committed to having a personal relationship with his children. It's there from the very beginning of the Bible. Remember how El Ohim, God, walked with Adam and Eve in the garden? From that very beginning, 
All through the Old Testament, we find him uh, working on behalf of his children, yearning for his children, uh, helping them, delivering them. It goes on and on. He was with them over and over. The promises, I'm with you, I'm with you. But then the fulfillment of it all comes when God sent his son. The prophecies there in the book of Isaiah, a virgin will conceive and she'll bear a son and she'll call his name Emmanuel. If you go to the Matthew's beautiful record of the birth of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1, he gives the meaning of the name of Emmanuel. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, he says, Emmanuel, which means, you can say it with me, you know it, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Hallelujah. I want to say this this morning, beloved. So many people know about Bethel. They know about God. But they, many have not experienced His presence. They know they've been at Bethel, but they may not have experienced El Bethel. This is what I want to say to you this morning. As we enter this Christmas season, following what's been actually a very difficult and painful year, I want to say this to you. I challenge you to put God at the center of the season. Put Him at the center of your heart. Put Him at the center of your life in this season. Now next Sunday, we're going to celebrate with a beautiful carol service. And you will love it. We're going to be singing about Jesus. But I want you to do more, beloved, this season than sing about Jesus who is God with us. I want you to experience the presence of God in your life. It's not enough to be at Bethel. We need to have that experience of knowing God personally. If you've never received Him as your Lord and Savior, do it today. Ask Him to become the Lord of your life. But even if you have been serving Him for many years, let this season be a new experience for you, where you come to know His presence in a new and a special way. God has something more for you. God has blessing for your life. I want you to experience God with us in your worship and in your work in your heart and in your home. Every day, beloved, sense the presence of God. Know that He's with you. Know that He will never leave you and that the blessing of God will be on your life in this blessed time of year. You know, we sing that little chorus uh, sometimes in our worship time, Jesus at the center of it all. And I thought, I'm just gonna leave that thought with you. Maybe you can sing that in some of your worship as you have your devotions this month, as the weeks of December go by. Jesus wants you to be at the center of my life. Father, we come in Jesus' name. And Lord, we're so thankful that you're the God who is with us. Lord, in all of our confusion, in all of our pain, and in all of our joys, and in all of our victories, you're with us. Lord, I just pray that these next weeks will truly be times of experiencing you in ways we never have before, to know the presence of God, to be at El Bethel, where God is at the center of our lives. We pray that you will bless the church today. Bless us as the days of this month go by in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. God bless you.